Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi reporting for the Media Speaks and Neopa Radio in Canton, Ohio. That's right, The Correct Views is now syndicated. That looks great. That means if you're on high def, where I'm pointing at now, Christelle, now that there's so many things running, we'll sometimes be adjusting the high def after the start. That's high def. You guys are low def, and I can't point. You're only audio. You guys that only heard a clap, you are Neopa Radio, who has now syndicated the correct views, which is awesome. Absolutely awesome. The show is growing by leaps and bounds. That's not happening because of me. I'm just a guy speaking into a microphone. It's happening because of you guys. So thank you, all of you. All right, guys, we're going to get straight into the news. Uh, This is from TheGuardian.com. Israel says it has shot down drone launched from Gaza. Now, usually I get all kinds of dislikes and crabby comments from people who are raging socialists and don't like me. Raging socialists, you're going to be laughing because I'm probably going to have my quote-unquote own peeps uh, harassing me for this one. Um, I am not angry at Israel for this here. I am not. If I come to your house and I say, I don't think that you should live here and I kick in your window and you say, listen, you'd better stop. And I egg your house and you say, hey, listen, Sam, you're pushing it. You better stop. I then flip off your daughter and uh, I don't know, break, break your car's windshield. You come out of the house with a gun and you shoot me. And everyone says, Why did you shoot an unarmed man? You have no patience. No, I had it coming. Israel, whether the Arabs like it or not, is a nation. What do I think? I think America needs to leave the region entirely. Goodbye, adios, and let them kill each other. Because Jews, you need to learn how to get along with Arabs. Arabs, you need to learn how to get along with Jews. And if you two can't do it, then I'll let you guys kill each other. That's the way that I feel. However, that's not the world we live in. Some people say it's Hamas. Some people say it's ISIS, which is now is, um, that has sent the bombs to Israel. The point is, somebody has been launching missiles and rockets non-stop towards Israel. Do you know that half, 50% of Israel were hunkering in bomb shelters before Israel struck back? Half of the country. If you send half of the country into bomb shelters, no matter what country it is, whether you like that country or not, you're about to get your tail kicked. Can it be more simple? I'm sorry, I'm not a Zionist. I think they need to share the land. However, that's not happening. And if you bomb Israel, they're not just going to roll over and let you bomb them. It is not Israel in this instance that has started the provocation. It simply isn't. They were launched upon from the occupants of Gaza, who they gave Gaza to on the condition that they'd be peaceful. The peaceful Gazans have launched rocket after rocket at Israel to the point where half of the nation, this is not me just picking a number, it is fact, it was reported. Half of the country was hiding in bomb shelters. And now people want to blame Israel for striking back with a lot of force. Maybe if you didn't want a lot of force, you shouldn't have sent rockets into Israel. 
says Israel claims to have downed a drone from the skies above its southern coastline. The unmanned aircraft, which Israel says was launched from Gaza and shot down with a Patriot missile near the city of Ashdod, is the first weapon of its kind Israel has encountered in the conflict. And everybody wants to pretend that somehow when Israel blows up children, it matters, but when Palestinians blow up Israeli children, it doesn't matter. Or it's the other way around. Listen, if you're blowing up children, you're scum. How's that? Um, I do know this, that the Palestinians tend to put their weapon systems in the middle of neighborhoods. Why? Because the only way that Israel can defend itself is to bomb a neighborhood if you put them in a neighborhood. Uh, Adolf Hitler used to employ these sorts of tactics. Has America ever done it? Probably, because America lately has done every crappy thing you can think of, unfortunately. But that doesn't make it okay. Um, but that's why Israel is shooting into these uh, neighborhoods. Uh, does Israel put their defenses in uh, neighborhoods? I don't know. If they do, it's a rotten thing to do. Would I be surprised if they did? No. I said I wasn't a Zionist at the beginning of this. I'm just not blaming Israel for this particular conflict at this particular time. Rockets were also fired into Israel from Lebanon early on Monday morning, drawing retaliatory fire from Israeli forces. This is the third such rocket attack from Lebanon since Friday. They were, there were no deported ca reported casualties. In the West Bank, a 21-year-old Palestinian was killed in Hebron after clashes between the Israeli military and protesters against the war in Gaza. The first Palestinian casualty in the West Bank since the conflict began. If you don't want a conflict in Gaza, then don't launch missiles from Gaza. The dead man, identified in unconfirmed reports as Munir al Bardeen, was shot during a protest at al Simora Junction, 20 minutes south of Hebron. Witnesses said Bardeen was shot with live ammunition around 3 a.m. after hours of clashes began after Ifar, the breaking of the Ramadan fast, was carried throughout the night. Look, you, regardless of which side of this you're on, you cannot launch rockets into a country and expect the country not to do anything back. You can't expect Israel just to roll over here. The bottom line is this. In this particular instance, those in Gaza who were firing rockets at Israel put all of Gaza in jeopardy, including the majority of innocents who got bombed when Israel defended itself against Gaza rockets that were put in neighborhoods just so when Israel did defend itself, they could get blamed for killing innocents when they had no choice but to do it, unless they were just going to lay there and let Gaza rockets blow them up. Does that mean I'm all Israel? No. Israel has done some crappy, dirty things for a very long time. The solution is they need to get together and either kill each other and get it over with, or figure out how to work this out. America is right. We need to get out of there as quickly as humanly possible because we are not going to get these two sides to, to come to any kind of an agreement. And that's, um, that's my correct view on it. Friends, uh, telegraph.co.uk, that would be the telegraph, Islamist plot to blow up Eiffel Tower, Levier, and nuclear power plant foiled by, Fr say, French police. I feel very, very bad for the common sense uh, Arabs that are exactly the same way I am. They may be Islamist, I may be Christian. I guarantee 99% of the Arabs in the world know that this is the stupidest idea in the entire history of stupid ideas. They want, in short, to blow up a nuclear power plant in France because for some reason terrorists are not able to understand the nature of what is known as the jet stream, which is when the planet moves in a circle. And I know a lot of you might think the Earth is in fact flat. Uh, it moves in a circle and it creates what's called the jet stream. 
and it brings it's what's poisoning the west coast of uh, America right now from Fukushima it's the same it moves in the same direction so if it's moving from Japan where the meltdown is to America, California, Oregon, Hawaii where the meltdown wasn't then the average terrorist doesn't seem to understand that if you bomb France the jet stream is going to bring it right over Arab lands. And you, Mr. Terrorist, are going to be poisoning innocent Islamists all over the Middle East. You're going to do more damage to your own people than America did with depleted uranium, which was despicable. You're going to do more against your own people than Israel ever did to you. You're going to melt down a nuclear reactor in Paris, and it's going to create the kind of illnesses in your children that Russian children have seen in Belarus. If you don't believe me, look up Belarus Chernobyl deformities, and when you're done vomiting, you will in fact agree with me. This is by Henry Samuel uh, Parry. France foiled an Islamist terrorist plot to target the Eiffel Tower, just one of the most beautiful structures in the world to everybody but Christelle. If we went to King's Island, they have like a miniature version of it. I could spend all day just looking at it. She's like, no, oh, that's nice, and walked away. The most beautiful structure in Ohio, maybe. France foiled an Islamist terrorist plot to target the Eiffel Tower, much to Christelle's applause. The, Lev the Louvre and even a nuclear power plant it emerged on Wednesday as the country unveiled new, tougher anti-terror rules. French police stumbled on the plans after, like Clouseau, after decrypting coded messages between a 29-year-old Algerian butcher living in Valacluse, southern France, and known as Ali M, and one of the highest-ranking members in Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb or AGIM, AQIM, excuse me. According to the Persian newspaper, in April last year, the married father of two, or went by the pseudonym Abu Jaji, was asked by AQIM contact, whose web alias was Redown18, to make suggestions concerning how to conduct jihad in the place you are currently. Ali Emmett goes on suggested targeting nuclear power plants, planes at the moment of takeoff, and a string of French landmarks including the Eiffel Tower and Louvre Museum in Paris. Failing that, he suggested launching terror attacks on the modest and poor French population in markets or nightclubs as well as police patrols. So for the good of Allah, just blow up the poor in France. What a, what a lovely philosophy. In an apparent reference to the famed Avignon Theater Festival, he also singled out cultural events taking place in South France with where thousands of Christians gather for a month. You blow up the Christians because they don't believe in Allah and don't think you need to lay on a mat three times a day. This is utterly ridiculous. But the fascism we're used to, we have fascism in our own country. We have racism on our own country. And uh, it's not always in the directions that you would think. It's in every direction possible. It's even worse. But... Blowing up a nuclear power plant is strictly for people who are too stupid to understand basic science. No one wins a nuclear war, and by extension, no one wins a nuclear meltdown, you idiot. Uh, this is from Armstrong Economics, uh, from Martin Armstrong. Computer modeling depends on the input. UN global warming model has been dead wrong for 18 years. In other words, somebody put a house beat behind this. Man-made global warming is a lie. Oomfa, 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 oomfa. Man-made global warming is a lie. It does not matter what we talk about, be it markets of climate. If the data you are putting in is garbage, you get garbage outs. It says, when it came to economic, I began a quest to gather data from ancient times to see how even the rise and fall of empires have developed. 
Those who created uh, models on markets watched them fall time and time again because the data series was at best back in 1971. The computer models designed for the global warming are seriously flawed. They are one, failing to take into consideration the fluctuation of the energy output of the sun. It fluctuates significantly as illustrated in the graph above. It's also listed on prison planet. Two, the polar ice caps expand and contract with the seasons. Many of you did not know that. In layman's terms, you can, if you deliberately test when the warming season is in, the polar caps will be smaller. They're doing that because they know if they test at the other season, they'll be much further, which is normal and has happened through uh, most of recent human history. Three, long before carbon dioxide emissions from man to any extent. Three, the magnetic poles shift as well. While on the sun, they reverse every 11 months which uh, the author went into detail in what is called the Mayan report, which you can look up. And four, the polar ice caps actually move. They will move away from Canada and into Russia at the current pace. When the poles flip, this is a chaotic move abruptly, not caused by man. The pictures of polar bears on ice are very nice and compelling. But this has nothing to do with man. These trends were in motion long before automobiles were invented. Honestly, this is political propaganda. In order for mankind to have created this trend, then there should never have existed any previous psycho cycle whatsoever. And of course there was. It says this is just witch doctor science. In the Mayan report, I explained, it says, the theory behind the Ice Age again was the discovery of frozen woolly mammoths. Suddenly, those discoveries shocked science. Even Isaac Newton was moved in his theory, confronted with the realization that the system was not linear but chaotic with sudden changes. Long before the automobile... Here we have these climatologists arguing there is global warming that then creates massive funding to support these crazy unsupported theories. This is like economists who argue for socialism and interventions so that they can create employment for themselves, not for you. If they said it was just the business cycle, then who needs them? Just follow the money. Both groups argue for whatever they need to create their own jobs, global warming and socialism. That's why they are so often linked, my friends. It says the UN computer predictions have been completely laughable and are now subject to wide-scale ridicule. They never have gotten anything right for 18 years running now. The model design is a total and complete joke. In other words, global warming is propaganda. Around the world, when you actually measure total ice formation, there is now about 1 million square kilometers of more sea ice than there was 35 years ago. This establishes they are monitor one segment, and if the poles move, they claim it's warming because the ice melted in that spot. Using fixed weather stations when everything moves is plain stupid and is fraud. In other words, man is not warming the planet. We've proved it yet again. Reviewjournal.com. Woman in class action lawsuit against Xerox dies. This is a, a, a odd twisted story by Jennifer Robeson. Time ran out for Linda Rolaine. The Las Vegas woman died Monday, less than two weeks after her family went public with details about Nevada Health Link Insurance Exchange enrollment troubles that kept her from treatment in January for an aggressive brain tumor. Rolaine, it says, was one of about 150 Nevadans suing Nevada Health Link contractor Xerox for enrollment mix-ups that left them without health insurance that they had paid for. Rolaine is the first to die of complications from an illness said to have gone untreated for lack of coverage. 
but observers close to her case say she may not be the last. We are worried that this is the first of many Nevadans who have life-threatening issues that may end up in such tragic circumstances. We urge all Nevadans to verify that their insurance is active and in place in light of the many problems that hundreds, if not thousands, of Nevadans have gone through, Rollins Law Firm Callister Immerman and Associates said in a statement. Local insurance broker Pat Casale, who in May began to help Rolaine with her enrollment issues, said he wouldn't be surprised if there were at least another 100 Nevadans face, facing both coverage problems and urgent and emergent health care needs. So, um, Xerox has dillied and dallied so long with this person's insurance that they died. Look at the story, friends, and ask yourself, are you in a mutual fund that Xerox is in? Are, are you investing in Xerox stock? And if so, is that something you really want to do? Because it looks like they don't hold up their end of the bargain here. This poor lady was told in January that she needed immediate attention. Uh, friends, it's July. Her doctor said if she had begun treatment in March, he might have been able to give her quality of care and she might have lived longer. She had no chance because of the delay. So, friends, that matters. Um, may I ask, if you happen to be in Sandusky, go ahead and uh, look up the Seacrest Motel. If you do so, if you buy Cedar Point, especially if you're looking for a place to stay, that may be a place you want to check out. Uh, tell them you were referenced by TCV. You're going to be talking to Vicki. She's awesome. She runs the Seacrest Motel. It is by far and away cheaper than any other motel that I have found anywhere near there. You got a nice bathroom, you got a tub, not a shower, you got comfortable beds. Most reasonable priced rooms you've ever seen. She's going to be way under the hotel breakers. She's going to be way under the days in. It's a good clean room, vending machine, one dollar pops. Go if you get a chance. Uh, I don't know, if, if you're going to be up there, drive by the Seacrest Motel. Check them out. Let them know TCV um, referenced you. If you get a chance also on Amazon.com, yours truly has written Risen, a persuasive uh, essay on the historicity of Jesus Christ, where I proved that Christ rose from the dead without using the Bible to do it. The Lucky Leprechaun and a novel called Asleep Unknowing, I've written them. And if you'd like, you can find them on Amazon.com. Lastly, Mike McLaughlin, he is a writer, he is a poet, and he is excellent. You can find him on Facebook.com. Look up the works of Mike McLaughlin if you get bored. You'll be awful happy that you did. You'll find one of the best writers extant today on it. Uh, friends, the American Dream. 17 facts that prove that the quality of jobs in America is going down the drain. Uh, Michael Snyder at the American Dream. Again, you want to read the whole article, but I'm going to go through all 17 of these lightning fast. There's a whole paragraph for each one, and if there's one article that you really want to look up after you've watched the show, it's this one. Um, there's a lot of information in this. I want to go through the 17, but again, each of the 17 are worth looking up. Uh, Prison Planet has a link to it if you can't find it in American Dream. One, the study conducted by the Center for College Affordability and Productivity is projecting that the number of college graduates that will be entering the workforce in the U.S. this decade will be nearly three times as high as the growth of the number of jobs that require a bachelor's degree. Oh, two, only four of the 20 fastest growing occupations in America in require a bachelor's degree or better. Three, it's hard to believe, but in America today, only one out of every 10 jobs is actually now filled by a temp agency. 10%, friends. Four, at this point, 53% of all wage earners, earners in the United States make less than $30,000 a year. Over half the workers, less than 30 grand a year. You have a job that pays that much or more? You're one of the luckiest people in America. Approximately one out of every four part-time workers in America is living below the poverty line. Thank you, Walmart. Six, one out of every three grocery store workers in the state of California is on some form of public assistance. By paying so little, the grocery stores are making you pay for their poor in your taxes. Seven, 
Due to the decline in quality jobs, income equality in the United States has grown to frightening levels, uh, and it mentions an article on Politico. Eight, in 2007, the average household in the top 5% had 16.5 times as much wealth as the average household overall. Nine, in terms of median wealth per adult, the United States is now 19th in the world. In other words, we're making terrible wages. Ten, our paychecks just keep getting smaller. Median household income in the United States is about 7% lower than it was in the year 2000 after adjusting for inflation. We're making less than we were in 2000. And again, I'm a DJ. I do okay where I'm at. But if the economy gets much worse and they don't need DJs, I'm doomed. 11. During the last recession, the U.S. economy lost millions of middle-class jobs. But during this recovery, most of the jobs have been created have been low-paying jobs. 12. Due to the lack of decent jobs, half, that's 50% for you Usher fans, of all college graduates are still relying on their parents financially when they are two years out of school. 13. According to one survey, 76% of all Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. That means if they get sick, they lose their house. 14. Back in the 1980s, over 20% of the jobs in the U.S. were manufacturing jobs. We made something for a good wage. Today, it says only about 9% of jobs in the U.S. are manufacturing jobs. 16. Another recent study found that 47% of unemployed Americans have completely even given up looking for a job. And 17. The plight of unemployed workers is likely going to continue to get even worse as technology replaces more of our low-paying jobs. For example, McDonald's plans to experiment by replacing thousands of workers in Europe with touchscreen terminals. Uh, you know what? Who can blame them for that? They've been playing, paying such low wages for so long that they almost won't even be missed. The answer here is to stop outsourcing jobs and to tax the living tar out of anyone that wants to bring American-made goods that were made, American-owned goods that were made in another country to bring them to the U.S., tax them through the roof. Watch how quick they move back. That's the correct view. Two more things to get to, guys. Photography is not a crime. Uh, let's put this up. New Jersey cops caught on camera, sicking dog, attacking man for recording a woman's arrest. This is what uh, this is what the Nazis used to do, and now it's happening in America, just like I've been saying since I started the show. I don't mean this show. I mean the entire show. A New Jersey man who video recorded a mob of cops beating a woman on the 4th of July was attacked and beaten himself by those same cops only for another citizen to record that arrest. Trenton police managed to delete the footage from the first camera and they've done in the past with other citizens but didn't manage to delete the footage from the second camera. I'm going to suggest those of you that film cops or something to do so in a streaming format so it doesn't matter whether or not they've taken it down. You have it secure on your, uh, on your computer or on whatever you streamed it to, hang out, whatever. Uh, don't use Google if you can help it. I'm roped into it. Uh, it says, only because they were too busy beating the first man to even notice that the second man was recording. It was the typical textbook cop beat town you've come to expect from the Blue Mafia with one cop yelling stop resisting to a non-resisting citizen crying out in pain as another cop sicks a dog on him and another kicks him in the face. Land of the free, home of the brave. To serve and to protect. It says that Lyle Queen was charged with obstruction of justice, resisting arrest, and charging an officer. He said he was just doing his laundry at a public laundromat after having recorded the cops when they confronted him. And this is according to the Trentonian. Before Queen was wound up, he was standing on the corner of Kirkbride Avenue, 10 and 15 feet away from the officers, filming on his phone the alleged assault of the woman when one of the cops told him he was interfering with an investigation. I told him I'm not interfering with anything. He said Monday, I'm just videotaping y'all beating up this girl, which is my right. After leaving the laundromat briefly and then returning for his belongings, he was again confronted by cops shortly before the alleged attack on him began. He was carrying his clean clothes. The video shows cops kicking and sorting through his clothes at the scene after Queen is arrested. 
The 31-year-old, it goes on, was taken to the hospital where he remained until early Saturday morning when he was transported to Trenton Police Lockup. The mechanic, it goes on, he was in custody for 10 hours before being released. He was charged with obstruction of justice, resisting arrest, and charging an officer, which of course he didn't do. On Monday morning, plead, Queen pleaded wisely, I might add, not guilty to the charges in Trenton Municipal Court. Queen claims the authorities confiscated his phone and erased the video of police beating up the woman before giving him back the device, but he is still trying to retrieve the video from his phone. Trentonian reporter David Foster has been doing a good job on keeping on top of the story. He's already written two stories on it. And uh, again, it goes on to um, mentioning the city is under new leadership. Of course, I mean, it's irrelevant. The, new, the, the old boss is the same as the new boss. It says the Trenton Police Department has obviously operated under the assumption that nobody outside its community would care how it acts. So a few lawsuits here and there wouldn't really make a difference to them considering the money they're dishing out. So what do you want to do? Why am I reporting on this? You can complain. Please do so politely. The new director, Ernest Perry Jr., can be reached at 609-989-4055. Complain at that number. The new mayor, Eric Jackson, can be reached at 609-989-3030. That is how you let them know that we won't put up with it anymore, by calling them and telling them rather uh, succinctly that we will not put up with it anymore. Friends, that brings us as it loads and reloads, uh, radio.com, the most annoying website ever. So if you're going to go ahead and verify this story, you might not want to go to the site because their webpage sucks and will eat up all of your RAM. Radio.com, detached.